Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Photoshop tutorial and the reason why we're doing this today uh, is mainly because game development consists of more than just uh, programming it's pretty much a whole range of things and so I'm going to be going over music 3d modeling and all that type of stuff um, but it's very important that you guys understand every single concept so it's not just unity uh, we're using as a program it's a whole bunch of programs that we're using to create our final game so we're still gonna be working on MOBAs we're still gonna be um, working on all types of games in unity but the Photoshop tutorials are mainly going to be for game based stuff. That's not to say that you can't use it for anything else. So if you're here and you're not a game developer, you just want to know how to do something cool, then that's very awesome and I love you for that. So let's get this tutorial started. So I started off my ability icon with finding some references online. Now it's very good to take a look at what other people have created and then you can adapt that to create your own thing. So what I did was go into Google Images and just search ability icons, found the one I like and then we're into Photoshop. So in Photoshop I decided to create a new document to hold my uh, reference photos in so I can access it quicker. Uh, then I went ahead and created a new document that was 64 by 64 pixels wide with a 72 resolution pixels per inch. The color mode was set to RGB color and make sure that's set to 8 bit as well. And the background content was transparent. This is because it's going to be on GUI, therefore, we need transparency in the background, or else it's going to be a perfect square. So, after renaming that document, I decided to go and create a new layer. I uh, grabbed my ellipse tool and create one of those uh, rounded square thingies, which I'm not too sure what the name of it is. I uh, decided to just draw that on somewhere random. And then I also resized it to fit the entire screen. I then went ahead and duplicated the layer so that we're working with two separate entities instead of one. So on one of them, I would set one to have a stroke on the shape, and then I'd set the other to just be a fill on the shape. Therefore, we can work with our border and we can work with our background. So once you've created both, we want to go ahead and right click our border layer, go to blending options, go to bevel and emboss, enable that. And then we want to set the shadow to a darkish gray, set the highlight to a lightish gray, make sure that the size is set to five and the depth is anywhere that you uh, really want it. It depends what effect you're going for to be perfectly honest, but I decided to go with 450 because that's way beyond what we really need um, in the end result. Anyway. Afterwards I enabled the contour so that we have some contour lines and then I enabled color overlay and then I changed it to a color of my choice which was dark gray, darkish gray um, and then of course you can change it to any color your heart desires. The next step is to Google gray gradients and we're going to grab a gradient because I wasn't really happy with just uh, one color background so I decided to have a gradient but instead of creating it purely in Photoshop I kind of wanted a more grungy gradient and the best way to do this is to Google for gray gradients and then when I found one which just so happened to be blue um, I pasted it into the document behind the border I resized it to my liking so now the gradient layer is seeping outside the border now this is not good so we're going to try and get the cuts off that but what we can do is use the fill layer as a reference point so if I select the fill layer I right click it and then go to rasterize because we cannot use the magic wand tool on an unrasterized object it just won't work so we go rasterize and then we want to go into our tools and find the magic wand tool now the magic wand tool is very good because it will select only the pixels that don't have transparency so we're gonna go and smother that butter all over our fill layer until we get the shape we desire then we're going to go to our gradient layer right click and go layer via cut now we can delete the offcuts that we don't need or just hide them if you want and then we now can play around with this shape. Now comes the fun part where we draw what the ability icon represents. Now this is a very important yet easy step to do since the resolution is so small you do not require much artistic talent because if you do make a mistake it's very easy to erase. So I grabbed out my tablet and I decided to go at it until I got a shape that I liked.
So now that we've finished our fabulous piece of artwork, we are going to go ahead and change the background gradient color because we can pretty much. And also because I then realized that blue wasn't really the color I wanted. The way to do this is to go and make sure that your layer is selected, click image, click adjustments, and then click color balance. And we're just gonna play around with these levels until we get something that we like. So to finalize the border, I decided to go into color overlay and make sure that it was a much lighter shade of gray. Now the reason behind this is because it just contrasted well with the colors. And I also decided to add a drop shadow to enhance the gradient layer in the background by going to drop shadow in the blending options. Let's make sure that the distance is set to zero and the size you can just adjust to your liking. So as an extra, you can always add something called a glow layer. Now the glow layer is not very important, but if you do decide to do it the main thing to remember is that you want it to go with the color either of the background or the color of the original image that you drew so I selected a green same color as my background and I got out my brush tool and decided to feather around the original image on a separate layer that was set underneath the original image layer so now we're pretty much done all the elements are there and they can all be tweaked very easily I decided to make everything a little bit darker because that's kind of what I wanted and also the most important thing about this is that now that we have all the layers if you do save that as a Photoshop file you can always come back to it use the exact same template hide the original uh, drawings and the glow layers and then you can also you know make more using that same kind of theme therefore it looks kind of consecutive so uh, for the game I've been working on recently I decided to use it here's a screenshot of that game and yeah this is pretty much what it turns out to be so I thank you guys for watching as always um, you know I, 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 I love doing these tutorial things so that's why I decided to branch out to Photoshop sorry if this wasn't for you uh, just leave a dislike if it wasn't for you leave a like if it if, if, if um, you enjoyed uh, it and um, as always oh yes we're on like 260 sub subs so I'm, I'm pretty happy um, thank you guys so much for doing that and I'll see you in another one